What's up guys? So these days YouTube feels a lot more meta. First thing we have people like Tom Scott making a video that knows its own views. Next thing we have people like me making a video that knows its own views inside of a video that knows its own views. It's kind of like YouTube's turned into the end of Inception. And the Oscar goes to Leonardo DiCaprio. But since making that last video on how to use the YouTube API to do what Tom Scott did, I've gotten a couple of requests asking me to do a more detailed code walkthrough. And since Mr. Beast recently put out a video taking the Tom Scott idea to the next level, coming up with a self-updating thumbnail, which is basically just Tom Scott's idea, but with a little image processing, I was thinking I could do a code walkthrough for the Mr. Beast video as it's just the Tom Scott video with one extra step, which is doing that image processing. So the steps for how we're gonna break this down are pretty simple, there's only three of them. And basically the logic is, well, YouTube still lets us call their API, we're gonna do step one, which is call the YouTube API and get the number of views on our video. And then if our current views is greater than our past views, we're gonna do step two, which is using Pillow, a famous Python library for image processing, to create a new thumbnail with our number of views. And then step three, update our video's thumbnail with the new thumbnail we just created. So this should be a really good way to learn image processing with Pillow and learn how to use the YouTube API. So let's get to it. So for starters, I just implemented what I was talking about right before. Uh, while we can call the YouTube API, I'm going to get the current video views. And then if our current views are greater than our past views, I'll create a new thumbnail with Pillow and update our video thumbnail. Right now, we're just going to implement our get views function. So uh, the YouTube API recommends using youtube.videos.list, but this actually takes 50 to 100 queries in Python, and we only have 10,000 queries a day. So because we're bowling on a budget, we're just going to call this URL, which will allow us to uh, parse the JSON and the read of this URL will only take three to five queries so we can save uh, like some queries. So for this, we're going to need a URL lib.request to request uh, the data at this URL, URL lib.request, and we're going to need JSON so we can parse this JSON because we see our view count for this video. It is at um, items at index zero at statistics at view count. So I'm going to write this up really quick and then I'll be right back and walk you all through the code. Sweet, so I just finished coding this up and it basically just gets the number of views for my video. So I'll just show a picture of the video and um, it having 205 views, but uh, basically what it's doing is using urllib.request to request uh, the information at this URL, which is uh, googleapis.com slash YouTube slash v3 slash videos. Uh, and then the part is statistics. And the ID is the video ID we pass in and the key is the key we pass in. So after we create this URL, we're just going to request it and we're going to open the URL and then we're going to read the data and then uh, load it in uh, in JSON format so we can parse it. And then as we talked about before, uh, the information we need is at items at index zero as statistics at uh, the key view counts. So then we get our variable views and we can return our views. So now we can establish if our current views are greater than our past views. And then if this is not the case, we can use pillow to create a new thumbnail. So in a second, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So the coolest part of what Mr. Beast did is definitely that he updates the video thumbnail in real time. So here we're going to do that with Pillow, the Python library. So after we see that our current views are greater than our past views, we're going to call this uh, with our current views. I'm just going to make a current view string and I'm going to pass that in as my uh, into my title so I don't have to cast it later. But in order to actually write on an image, uh, we're going to have to use Pillow. So I created this uh, sample thumbnail. It has me, and then I'm going to add the text right where I'm pointing. But now we need to use pillow to write the number of views programmatically. So I'm going to take this image and I'm going to use pillow to draw a text on it. So I need to import pillow. I think that can be done with like a uh, pip install uh, pillow, but I'll put the install like right up here and in the description. So we need to say from pill import image we need to import our image from pill import uh, 
uh, our font, so image font, and then from pill import image draw because we need to draw on our image. So after we get our view string, we want to open our image. So we could say our image is equal to image dot open sample in dot jpeg. And then after we do that, we can also uh, set up our uh, our drawing canvas. So we can say image draw dot draw our image. And then now we're going to need to open our font. So uh, most fonts, and I have this file in my directory, corpbold.otf, most fonts can be found for free. This is a free font that I found on w3fonts.com, and I'll put that link in my description. Uh, but you're going to need to use uh, the image font uh, module that we just imported to open that font. So we're going to set our font equal to image font.true type, and then the name of our file, corp bold, and you can use any font you want. All of these font files will be in .otfs or .ttfs, and then our font size, which is 90. So now that we did that, we can just say draw.text, and we need to say our xy. I already found like a good place to put the xy, so it'd be right next to my finger, it's 590, 200. And then I'm going to say my views, uh, view string plus views, because my video has x views. And I'm going to uh, color my uh, view string to be 50 to a 5, 50, which is like some shade of lime green, and set my font equal to font. Cool. And then I want to write one more line so I can say something under the uh, text. And I'm just going to say like it has X views, or I'll say so far. Cool. Looks like we might have a little problem with the image font. We spelled true type wrong. There we go. Uh, so now, uh, after we draw our text, we're just going to have to say image.save. I'm going to save this as thumbnail.jpg. And then now we can run our driver with zero views. And let's see, run Python file in terminal. Cool, and it looks like this worked. Thumbnail's been created. And we have zero views, but there, we wrote over ourselves. So what we're going to want to do is actually put this 100 below, run it again, and now that should work. And we have zero views so far. Cool, so I hope this made sense, guys. Uh, now we're going to move on to the last part of the video, which is updating the thumbnail with uh, the new, or updating our video thumbnail with what we just uh, coded. So in order to make changes to our video thumbnail, we're gonna have to make a call to the YouTube.thumbnails.set function. And in order to make those calls, we're going to have to set up a project on our Google Cloud Console. So after I create a project, I want to go to my APIs and services. And I'm going to have to create credentials so I can set up this OAuth consent screen. So the OAuth consent screen is pretty self explanatory. You just put the app name. But something really important is you need to go in the credentials, uh, create API keys, and create a uh, OAuth 2.0 client IDs, and then you need to download this client uh, ID file, which will be a client.json file, and then put that in your project. So after you get all that set up, you can go back to your code, and I'm not even going to try to remember how to write this up, but I'm going to explain to you how it works in a second. Um, but a problem that I've been kind of tiptoeing around is that you're going to need to remember things from the past. So after I run through their credentials flow the first time, I don't want to run through it again. I want this to be able to run in perpetuity so it can be programmatically updated. So a way that I can do this is I can save references to my uh, credentials and the credentials objects I've created by, go created by going through my flow. And I can do that by having this credentials class that I've made. So uh, I can have some credentials ob uh, instance and then what I can do is instead of having past views, I can have my credentials dot view count be my past views. And at the end of every call, um, I can just set my view count to my current views. So after doing this, I'm also going to have to save the references to the uh, consent screen objects. So basically what's happening in this function, uh, I'm importing a couple new things. And then I'm going through this flow where I get this flow variable, 
uh, this credentials variable and this YouTube variable. And by me getting these uh, variables, I'm able to make a request to the YouTube.thumbnails.set function with the ID that I want to change uh, with that thumbnail that we just created. So it's pretty simple. It's only like three steps, but it's just like pretty uh, like random stuff. And you need to make sure to save these credentials. And that's why we're having this credentials object. So I don't have to go through this consent screen in the future. So as I was discussing before, uh, we only have 10,000 calls to the API that we can make. So we're going to want to time out and do some type of long polling so we can pull it every couple minutes. But one strategy to try to make sure that our thumbnail can be as accurate as possible is read more frequently because reading only costs like three to 10 queries the way we're doing it and then write less frequently. So we could have some variable timeout. I can set it equal to two minutes originally. And then if we just read and don't write, then I can uh, keep that set to two minutes and read again in two minutes. But if we just write and don't read, then I can set that Oh, if we write and read, then I can set that to four minutes or I can set that to five minutes. And then at the end here, I'm going to sleep for my timeout. So in a second, I'm gonna come back and run this. Uh, but if you need any of this code, it's going to be on my GitHub, but also uh, the code that we just went over for step three is right here. Cool, so now I'm gonna show you guys me going through running this code and going through the OAuth consent screens. So I put all my API keys and IDs in the right place. I actually um, am going to update from a public video to the thumbnail of a private video because the video needs to be public to get the view count. Um, so I'm going to be taking the views from my uh, chatting video with Kunal and then updating that to one of my code in place uh, section videos. So what I'm going to be doing here is going to the link they're going to be giving me and then authorizing that they can edit videos on my account. This is the only time I have to do this. And then after I put this code in, then it'll just run in perpetuity. Cool, so I updated that thumbnail. I'll show you what the thumbnail looked like before and then what it looked like after. Cool, so I hope that made sense, guys. One more point, uh, you're going to need to run this as some like background task so you can run it in perpetuity without messing with it. The way that I usually do that is with screen. I have a video, I'll link it up here on how to run background tasks with screen. But apart from that, uh, everything uh, has been talked about, I guess, that you need to know in order to be able to make your thumbnail match your views, just like Mr. Beast. Shout out to Mr. Beast for always coming up with new crazy things. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I've really enjoyed making these videos the last couple months. So if you like this, put a like and comment down below. And if you have any other things you want me to do in the future, also just put a comment down below. I'll see you guys again soon. Have a good one. Peace.